I would like to at this time introduce you to our MC, my colleague and friend, Samora Smith. We will start with our very first finalist. She is Jennifer Novotny. Jennifer, join me on the stage, please. So we meet again. It's good to see you. It's wonderful to see you too. Do so you have a ball of nerves going on right now? Absolutely. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your presentation for this evening. So tonight I'm going to share with you some of my graduate research and a little bit about a material that has changed the world. Okay, let's start changing it. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Novotny. Hi, I'm Jennifer Novotny, and today I'm going to share with you a material that has changed the world. I'll give you a few hints. Americans use over 60 billion pounds of it a year. It has also revolutionized the medical industry. Do you have any guesses? The answer is polymers. Polymers are large molecules made up of many smaller repeating units that we call monomers. These monomers are then chemically linked together to make the larger polymer chain. I like to think about polymers like a train, where each car represents a monomer, and then they get hooked together to make the larger polymer chain. The properties of polymers vary depending on their atomic composition and length, but you can commonly find polymers in places like plastics, vinyl, and rubber. As a scientist, I sometimes forget about how much science there really is in my daily life. So to put it in perspective, how many of you are wearing clothes today? Good. Now, how many of you are wearing a polymer today? Everyone should have their hands up. We can thank polymers for us not being naked. Synthetic polymers, like nylon and polyester, are commonly formed into fabric fibers, but natural polymers, like cotton, are also used in clothing. It's really important to think about the science in the world around us. Unlike these linear train-like polymers that extend in only one dimension, the polymers I make form a three-dimensional framework similar to a jungle gym. These types of polymers are known as porous organic polymers. The polymer chains gives it shape and rigidity, but there's still a lot of free space inside. In particular, I've looked at using these polymers to detect explosives like TNT. You can envision walking into a body scanner at an airport where a device containing this polymer samples the air around you. If there are TNT molecules present, they will interact with the polymer chains, creating a visual response that we can detect. The pores of the polymer allow the TNT to interact with more of the polymer chain, creating a response that would allow TSA officials or military personnel to react to a threat more quickly. In the Dictel group, we look at using these materials to solve a variety of problems that are pressing our society today. For me, both of my brothers are in the military, so I find it particularly rewarding to know that my research could one day impact those I love. Looking at the science in our daily life, along with looking at how new technology impacts our daily life, truly shows the power of science in our world. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about polymers, where you can commonly find them, and a little bit about the new research in this field. I also hope that this has given you a lens to see the world in which you see the science in your daily life. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that information and letting us know that it's a great idea to not go naked and to wear polymers. <laughs> it can be quite helpful in the winter in Ithaca. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, let's hear a few words from our panel of judges. First, we'll start with Sam. What do you think? Well, thank you, Jennifer, for going first. It was very nice. Um, a couple things I really thought you did a very nice job of. Um, one, especially, was kind of bringing it to people's daily lives, so showing them, uh, you know, things like clothes, the TSA scanner, mm -hmm. how your work really affects what they're doing day to day. And I think that's very important for people trying to communicate science because a lot of times people, you know, kind of their eyes glaze over, they don't know what you're talking about. So I think that you did a very nice job with that. Um, and the other thing. I did, you think you did a nice job with was starting with kind of simple things, uh, as you said, kind of one-dimensional things and kind of building from there. Um, and the graphic you had about the one-dimensional building out, I thought that was kind of a good structure, a way to even think about how you're building when you're trying to communicate things, was working from one-dimensional up. So nice job on both of those things. Wonderful. Thank you. Lydia, care to add more? Yes, yes. Jennifer, I thought you had a really nice, easy confidence throughout, and I really, um, I appreciated that you had a very polished and positive um, 
atmosphere, and that's what you projected is positivity, and also and, and the confidence as well. Um, I kind of would have liked to have seen you maybe just loosen that up a little, and maybe possibly breathe a little more, because I, I know you're nervous, and I completely understand that. But maybe in, instead of worrying so much about if you are worried, I'm not sure how you sound, but really connecting to the listener. And what I really loved is about bringing in your brothers from the military and bringing in that personal mm -hmm. um, piece of you, which can connect the audience to you. And I thought that was a very, very good choice. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Lydia. And Kiki. I have to second the comments of the first two judges. Um, you had wonderful poise on stage, uh, but at the same time, it was very rehearsed, and so being able to make it more casual would be just a wonderful way to bring it down and be able to connect more easily with the audience. Um, the first question you asked, uh, you asked the question, but then rushed to your answer without waiting and giving the audience a chance to think about it. And that was your first opportunity to really connect with them. And so a little pause there would have been nicer. The second question you asked was done much better. People raised their hands. You responded. And you had a real back and forth there, which is very important. Overall, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our judges. <laughs> Jennifer, would you agree with any of the comments made? No, I thought they were very wonderful comments, and I have been very nervous being up here. Um, <laughs> fortunately, um, you know, a lot with the media training we did yesterday um, was very helpful. I probably cut four or five sentences out of my talk to try to slow it down and give a better chance to look at the audience and try to connect with everybody. I think it is very important to look at the technology and science in our life. I think we can look at a cell phone and see the science behind it, but we don't often look at our clothing or our shoes to really see what's gone into those productions. Well, we thank you, Jennifer. We certainly thank you for being such a great sport doing the technical issue. And <laughs> let's give it up again for Jennifer and Polymers. <laughs> <laughs>